Hello everyone. In this video, we will be learning about requirements of part of building. The first one is plinth. The plinth of building shall be so located with respect to the surrounding ground level that adequate drainage of the site is assured. The height of plinth shall not be less than 30 cm above the surrounding ground level. In areas subjected to flooding, the height of plinth shall be at least 45 cm above the high flood level. Covered parking spaces and garages shall be raised at least 15 cm above the surrounding ground level and shall be satisfactorily drained. Size and dimension of habitable rooms shall be as per requirement and convenience of the owner. Any habitable room should have minimum height of 2.75 meter and maximum 4.5 meter. Habitable room in economic weaker section or low income group housing should have minimum height of 2.75 meter and maximum 4.2 meter. Air conditioned habitable room can have minimum height of 2.4 meter and maximum 4.5 meter. The size of kitchen or cooking space shall be as per requirement and convenience of the owner. The height of a kitchen measured from the surface of the floor to the lowest point in the ceiling shall not be less than 2.75 meter. The size of bathroom and water closet. For independent bathroom, the minimum size should be 1 by 1.2 meter. For independent water closet, the minimum size should be 0.9 by 0.9 meter. For combined bathroom and water closet, 1.5 meter square with minimum width or width as 1 meter. The height of a bathroom or water closet measured from the surface of the floor to the lowest point in the ceiling shall not be less than 2.1 meter. Other requirements of bathroom and water closet. Every bathroom or water closet shall be so situated that it derives ventilation from ventilation shaft or external air. It shall have a window or ventilator opening to a shaft or open space of area not less than 0.3 square meter with side not less than 0.3 meter. All the sewerage outlets shall be connected to the sewerage system. Loft may be provided at suitable places as per requirement. It may be provided over kitchen, habitable rooms, bathrooms, water closets and corridors. The clear headroom under the loft shall not be less than 2.1 meter. It shall not interfere with the ventilation of the room under any circumstances. The maximum height of loft shall be 1.5 meter. The minimum size of mezzanine floor shall be as per requirement and convenience of owner. The aggregate area of such mezzanine floor shall in no case exceed 50% of built up area of that room. Where loft is provided in the room, the mezzanine floor shall not be allowed. The headroom under mezzanine floor shall not be less than 2.1 meter. A mezzanine floor may be permitted in a room or within a space provided. It conforms to the standards of living rooms as regards lighting and ventilation in case the mezzanine floor is used as habitable room. It is so constructed as not to interfere under any circumstances with the ventilation of the space over and under it. Such mezzanine floor or any part thereof will not be used as a kitchen. It is at least 1 meter away from the front wall of such room. 
Access to the mezzanine floor is from within the respective room only. The area of a storeroom, if provided in a residential building where light, ventilation, and height are provided at standards lower than as required for the living room, shall be as per requirements and convenience of the owner. The roof of a building shall be so constructed or framed as to permit the drainage of rainwater there from rainwater pipes of adequate size wherever required as to ensure that the rainwater is carried away from the building without causing dampness in any part of the walls or foundation of the building or those of an adjacent buildings. Top terrace of a building shall not be subdivided and it shall have only common access. Balcony or balconies of a minimum width of 1 meter and maximum of 2 meter may be permitted in a residential buildings at any floor except ground floor and such balcony projection shall be subjected to the following conditions. In non-congested area, no balcony shall reduce the marginal open space to less than 2 meter up to 24 meter building height. For height 24 meter and more, no balcony shall reduce the marginal open space to less than 6 meter. Balcony, though not cantilever, shall be allowed on ground floor after leaving required setback or marginal distances. The width of the balcony shall be measured perpendicular to the building up to the outermost edge of balcony. Nothing shall be allowed beyond the outer edge of balcony. Every overhead water storage tank shall be maintained in a perfectly mosquito-proof condition by providing a properly fitted hinged cover and every tank more than 1.5 meter in height shall be provided with a permanently fixed iron ladder. Parapet walls and handrails provided on the edges of roof terraces, balcony and veranda shall not be less than 1 meter and not more than 1.2 meter in height from the finished floor level. The maximum height of the front compound wall shall be 1.5 meter above the central line of the front street. The maximum height of side and rear compound wall shall be 1.5 meter above the average ground level of the particular plot. In case of a corner plot, the height of the boundary wall shall be restricted to 0.75 meter. All the values mentioned in the video were taken from UDCPR for Maharashtra state. I hope you understood the points explained in the video. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn about planning of a residential building. A residential building can be divided into three major areas that are living area, sleeping area and service area. The service area includes kitchen, dining room, bath and WC. The living area is the area for general use. Hence, the living and drawing rooms should be planned near the entrance. It should be planned taking into view the following considerations. It should not provide direct passage or access to the bedrooms and WC or bath. It should be adjacent to the dining room. It should be comfortable and spacious in order to accommodate furniture and also allow proper circulation area. It should be sufficiently lighted and offer an attractive view of the surrounding landscape, garden, etc. It should have a southern or northern aspect. Sleeping area provides bedrooms for sleeping and relaxing. Bedrooms may be with attached toilets, that is, bath and WC. Their size depends upon the number of beds. They should accommodate beds 
easy chairs, cupboards, and such other pieces of furniture. They should have a northwest or southwest aspect. The kitchen may be adjacent to the dining room or separate. It consists of cooking area, that is, kitchen, sink, and cupboards. It should have an eastern or northeastern aspect. The dining room may be attached to the living room or to the kitchen. It is a room in which meals are served. Kitchen activities should be screened from the dining area by means of cupboards or a screen. A service window may be provided between the kitchen and the dining room. Bath and WC should be approachable from all rooms. Dados or glazed tiles should be provided or otherwise walls should be coated with smooth waterproof cement coat. They should also be provided with necessary fixtures. Size and type of WC pans, wash basins, electrical installations for hot water, plumbing fixtures, washing machine, etc. Control the size of the bathroom and WC. Other areas like the puja room, study, etc. may be suitably located near the living room, bedroom or the kitchen. I hope you understood the points explained in the video. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn about circulation. The first part is doors. Doors in a building provide access, privacy and safety for different rooms. The different types of doors classified on the basis of types of shutters are ledged and braced single or double shutters made from timber are suitable for economical construction. The second one is framed and paneled single or double shutters made from timber are suitable for entrance doors. Fully and partially glazed single or double shutters made from timber and glass is suitable for where light is to be admitted inside the room and where the view of landscape is to be enjoyed. Flush doors single or double shutters made from pressed wood can be used for interior doors. Collapsible doors made from iron are suitable for staircases entrance for ventilation. Steel shutters are suitable for staircase entrances and entrance gate. The normal size of a door is 0.9 meter by 2.1 meter including the frame for all rooms. And 0.75 meter by 2.1 meter for WCs and bathrooms. Here are the photographs of some types of doors. The next part is windows. Windows are classified on the basis of material and type of shutters that are provided, which is similar to that of doors. The window sill is kept at a height of 750 mm above floor level. Door and window tops are kept at the same level, that is 2.1 meter above the floor level. Various fixtures and fastenings include hinges, tower bolts, handles, hooks and knives. Interior staircase shall be constructed of non-combustible materials throughout. Hollow combustible construction shall not be permitted. The minimum width of tread without nosing shall be 25 cm for an internal staircase for residential building. The maximum height of riser shall be 19 cm in case of residential building and 15 cm in case of other buildings. The treads shall be constructed and maintained in a manner to prevent slipping. 
handrails shall be provided with a minimum height of 100 cm from the center of the tread to the top of the handrails. The minimum headroom in a passage under the landing of a staircase shall be 2.2 meter. I hope you understood the points explained in the video. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. In this video, we will be learning about how to create a floor plan in AutoCAD for G plus 1 residential building. The steps we will be following are first we will make sure that we are using the correct units and then we'll create a basic line plan, add wall thickness to it, add doors and windows and lastly add text and dimensions. So let's get started. After you open the drawing, first we will change the units by using the units command. So type UN and then press enter. I want to use the metric units, so I'll choose decimal over here and keep the precision as 0, 0.00. After changing the units, first we will draw a basic line plan. So for this, start by drawing a rectangle. Specify the first corner. And then for entering the dimensions, I will type D and then press enter. Specify the length for the rectangle. I will type in as 11 meter and for the width I will type 15.2 meters. And here you have a rectangle. Using the offset command, I'll add wall thickness to this. Specify the offset distance. In most of the residential buildings, the external walls have a thickness of 0.23 meters or 9 inches if you are using imperial units. I will use the line command now to separate this area into different rooms. So now that we have created a basic line plan, I want this area to be the living room. This is the kitchen. Adjacent to the kitchen is the storeroom. This is the staircase area. At the end, there are two bedrooms. And these two are WC and bath. Now let's add wall thicknesses to our plan. For this, I will use the offset tool.
Now that we have added wall thicknesses, we need to trim this intersecting lines. Now that we have trimmed all the intersecting lines, we need to add doors and windows. First, we will add doors. For this, you will need to create a block. So first, let us draw a door and then convert it into a block. We will keep the door width as one meter. This is the symbol of door we will be using in our drawing. To turn this into block, use the block command. Specify base point. Select the object. Then press enter. Enter the name for your block and then click OK. Now you can see this whole object is a block. To place this in our drawing, I will copy this block. Make sure you trim the unnecessary lines. Similarly, I will place the door for all the rooms. As you can see, I have provided doors wherever required and I have also added steps for the front door. Now we'll add staircase. For adding the steps, again use the offset command. The width of the tread we will keep as 0.3 meter. Press M for multiple. Let's trim this line in the middle.
Now that we have created our stairs, let's go to the windows. We will provide windows the same way we have provided doors. Let's create a block for the window. Let's create two lines in the center for the shutters of the window. Let's turn this window into a block by using the block command. Enter the name. Select the window, then press enter, then click OK. Place the window in your drawing using the copy command. As you can see, I have provided windows wherever required and in front of the windows, I have provided chajas. Usually in the drawing, we display chajja and the door with dotted line. The next step is to add text and dimensions to our drawing. First, we need to measure out the dimensions of the living room. You need to measure out both horizontal and vertical dimensions. And then you can add text by using the text command. So this is the living room. Below the living room, you will write the dimensions of the room. Make sure that you add the horizontal dimension as the first one. After the adding, you can erase the dimensions or you can keep it. and move the text. Let's add text and dimensions for all the rooms. Here you can see I have added text and dimension for all the rooms and also I have added text on doors and windows. And also for bath and WC, I have added V for ventilators. I hope you understood the points explained in this video. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. In this video, we will be learning about how to create a floor plan in AutoCAD for G plus one residential building. Here you can see our ground floor plan is ready. And in similar fashion, I have created the first floor plan. I've made a few changes in it. For example, where the kitchen and storeroom was, I have converted that into a terrace for the first floor. And the rest of it I have kept as it is. Let's create terrace floor plan now. For the terrace floor plan, you want to include only the staircase and nothing else. So for that, let's create a rectangle.
and then create offset for the wall. Copy this part. And paste it over here. As you can see, our ground floor plan, first floor plan, and terrace plan has been created. For the terrace plan, I'll add hatching over this area. I hope you understood the points explained in this video. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn how to create front elevation in AutoCAD. While creating the front elevation, you will be able to see this whole length plus this window, this door, and the steps in front of the door and this window as well and chajas of this and this window. In the first floor, you will be able to see this window and then this chajja and also thickness of this wall. On the terrace, the headroom for this staircase will be visible. Let's start drawing the front elevation. Start by drawing a line of 11 meters because this whole length is 11 meters. And then Draw an offset of 0.6 meter. This will be our plinth level. After this, draw a rectangle of length 11 meter and width 3 meter. This will be our ground floor. You want to copy this whole rectangle and place it on top. This will be our first floor. Now you can see this line will be visible in the front elevation. And then the door beside it will also be visible. For the door, draw a rectangle of 1.2 meter length and height 2.1 meter. After this, you want to draw this window. First, we will have to measure at what distance is the window from the door. It is at 1.28 meter. Therefore, draw a line of 1.28 meter. And then from this point, you will start drawing your window. Let us draw the chajja first. Thank you. 
This will be our chhaja. Now let us draw the panels of window. Draw a line down the center of the window. And then create rectangles for both parts. Using the offset command, draw the panels of the window. Delete the line. Add hatching to the glass panels. You might want to change the scale of the hatching. In this way, we have created a first window. We also have one more window over here. Let us measure the distance of the window from this wall. It is at 1.92 meter. As before, Draw a line of 1.92 meter and then copy this window and the second window is also created. And now we have to create chajas of this and this window. The chajja will be at the same level as this chajja. For creating it, use the rectangular command. For length, type 0.45 meter and for thickness, type 0.07 meter. I want to create the same chajja over here. For this, we can use the mirror command. Select the object that you want to mirror. And then select the midpoint of this line. You do not want to erase the source object. And here the other chajja is also created. So, the only thing left is these steps. Measure out the distance of the landing, which is 1.55 meter. Keep the riser as 0.15 meter and tread as 0.3 meter.
In this way, the details of ground floor are all completed in the front elevation. Now, let us go to the first floor. The first thing that you'll notice is the thickness of this wall. So, let us measure. this length which is 3.43 meter type in 3.43 and then create the wall to create the thickness use the offset command And then you will also be able to see this window and this chajja. For creating this window, draw a line of the distance that you want the window to be from this level. And then copy this window. You will also be able to see the chajja of this window. Copy this chajja and place it at this level. The details of first floor plan are completed in the front elevation now. Let's move on to the terrace plan. For the terrace plan, you will only be able to see the headroom for the staircase and the parapet wall. So first we'll draw the parapet wall. To draw the parapet wall, use the rectangle command. Enter D for typing in dimensions. Keep the length as 11 meter and height as 1 meter. After this, draw the headroom. Specify the length and height of the headroom. And then you will also be able to see the parapet wall for this terrace. Draw the parapet wall at a height of 1 meter. And then trim these lines. You can also add hatching for the parapet walls. And with this, a front elevation is completed. I hope you understood the points explained in this video. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn how to create sectional elevation in AutoCAD. Before drawing the sectional elevation, first you have to decide from where the section line should pass in your floor plan. It is recommended that the section line should pass through the staircase. So let us draw the section line first. I will choose another color for the section line. Using the line command, for this floor plan, I will pass the section line through this part. So this is a section line. So while drawing the sectional elevation, the part in front of the section line is cut and 
you will be able to see all these thicknesses and the staircase and this thickness of the wall. So let us start drawing. First, let us draw the thickness of plinth level. Which will be 11 meters. And the height of our plinth level is 0.6 meters. Let us draw the different layers in a plinth level. For the first layer, I will provide maroon. For the second layer, we will provide rubble. And the third layer which is remaining, that will be our DPC layer. So let us start drawing the wall thicknesses now. First, this thickness will be visible in a sectional elevation and then also this thickness. The thickness of this wall is 0.23 meter and let us measure the thickness of this wall. It is 0.11 meter and it is at a distance of 2.25 meter. Our floor to floor height is 3 meter. So let us draw a line of 3 meter. And then by using the offset command, we will draw the wall thickness. So this wall thickness is drawn now. Let us draw this thickness. Again using the offset command, the another wall is at a distance of 2.25 meter from this line. And then the thickness of the wall is 0.11 meter. So now we have drawn this wall thickness and this wall. The next part which you will see is the edge of this wall and this wall. As the section line does not pass through this walls, the thickness of it will not be visible. Only the edges will be visible. So let us measure at what distance is the edge of this wall? It is at 0.95 meter. And then And then the thickness of the next edge of the wall is at 1.91 meter. So let us draw these both lines first. Using the offset command, type in the distance 0.95 meter. And then 1.91 meter for the next edge of the wall. After this, the stairs will be visible in the sectional elevation, but before that, we will draw the thickness of this wall.
draw a line of 3 meter and then use the offset to draw the thickness of the wall. Now that we have drawn all the wall thicknesses, let us move forward and draw the staircase. First, we will have to measure the landing portion, which is 1.62 meter. So, from 1.62 meter of the from this edge of the wall, the staircase starts. So let us draw a line of 1.62 meter and then start drawing a staircase. The riser of the staircase is 0.15 meter. And the tread is 0.3 meter. So our first step is drawn now. We will use the copy command to draw the remaining stairs. Specify the base point and then turn off ortho. So this is a first step. We have 10 steps per flight. So we will draw 10 steps for this flight. So this is a 10th step. Now we have to connect this last step through the thickness of the wall. This will be our waste slab. So for thickness of the waste lab, I will take it as 0.23 meter. And then using this waste lab as a reference, I will draw the bottom part of the stairs. In this way, we have created our first flight. Now the first flight of our staircase is complete. To draw the second flight, you can use the mirror command. Select this flight of stair, enter MI, and then specify the first point of the mirror line. You do not want to erase the source object. And then select this flight of stair and then simply move it over here. Extend this and this line. The staircase from ground floor to the first floor is created. In the sectional elevation, you will also be able to see the thickness of slab and beams. So let us draw the slab. The thickness of the slab, I will keep it as 0.23 meter. This is not the standard dimension for the thickness of the slab. 
you will have to adopt the dimension provided by the structural engineer. Now that the thickness of our slab is drawn, the next thing we will draw is the thickness of the beam. So the thickness of the beam, I will take it as 0.45 meter. We do not have to draw beams for this walls as the thickness is not visible over here. Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn how to create sectional elevation in AutoCAD. Let us draw the footing below the columns now. Here I am drawing a rectangular footing, but you can also draw other types of footing such as trapezoidal footing, dome footing, square footing, etc. Draw the other part of footing by using the mirror command. To draw the footing for this column, you can simply copy this footing. Specify the base point. Trim all the unnecessary lines. Now let us draw this ventilator in the sectional elevation. I will draw this at a height of 1.61 from the finished floor level and I will keep the height of ventilator as 0.6 meter. So the ground floor of a sectional elevation is complete. Let us move on to the first floor. Let us draw the section line in the first floor as well. While drawing the section of the first floor, you will see 
all the same things that we have drawn from the ground floor. So, what we will do is simply copy all the elements and place it on the top. Trim and extend the lines as needed. So let us draw the headroom for the terrace floor now. Here you can see the thickness of this wall and this wall is cut by the section line. The first wall is of the height 2.5 meter. And then draw the slab for the headroom. Draw the thickness of this wall. And then the thickness of this wall. And then the thickness of this slab. The slab is rested on beams, so we need to draw beams over here and over here. I will take the depth of the beam as 0.45 meter. Now trim the unnecessary lines. The next thing we need to draw is the parapet wall. Draw a parapet wall of height 0.9 meter. Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn how to create sectional elevation in AutoCAD. Our sectional elevation is almost complete. We just need to specify the material used in different parts of the section. Let us start with the footings. Use the hatch command. You want to use the concrete hatching for the footing. And also for the staircase and beams. Once 
we need to change the scale in order to make the hatching visible. In this part, we need to show the hatching for maroon. So for this, use the gravel. On the top of the murum, we need to show rubble. For this, we will use the same hatching But what we will do is reduce the scale. Above the rubble, we need to provide a slab. And for that, again, use the concrete one. After this, we will do the hatching for wall thicknesses. In the WC and bath, for this wall, tiles are provided. So we need to show it in our sectional elevation. Change the scale. The next part we need to do is specify dimensions wherever necessary.
Now a sectional elevation is complete. Always make sure to specify the direction of north and dimensions in your drawing. I hope you understood how to draw sectional elevation using AutoCAD. Thank you for watching.